She's in a whole bunch of amazing researchers who just keep digging up more amazing stuff. Michael McKibben, welcome to the show. Happy Thanksgiving week. Oh, thank you so much. I get so lost, I don't know what time it is. Uh, you know, when you're fighting the globalists, there's there's no time. There's no time. I know. You just got to keep working all the time. And you just keep working uh, as the spokesperson for all these people doing this research. I don't know who it is that keeps coming up with where to look. Sometimes I get to participate in that. And it seems as if now you have a guy, Joe Sullivan, that you are bringing to the light and disinfecting him with sunlight. And it seems as if he's a Mueller cyber thug, a Robert Mueller cyber thug. And these people who hear us say that this goes back to Rose Law Firm and it goes back a long time and it's the same cabal, the same group of people, Robert Mueller, Rat Rodenstein, Clinton's Podesta, I always forget to add Podesta there, Chandler, the whole group. And then what do we see now? We see that uh, there's a turf war going on. A turf war for something that most people didn't even know existed, attacks on the internet. Everybody pays a tax on the internet, they don't even know it. And Michael McKibben is here to describe to you today what that means, also to tell you about who Joe Sullivan is in relationship to Robert Mueller. And I'm here to basically complain that these crypto keys are in the hands of the wrong people and they need to be put in the hands of the right people. I would suggest leader technologies so that these crypto keys can actually be honest instead of being used as a way to surveil and attack, manipulate and control the internet, playing like there is no tax on the internet, and playing like it doesn't go into the very pockets of Hillary Clinton, Jerry C. Jones, her buddy, uh, uh, Richard C. Walker, another one of her buddies, all the buddy, her buddies in the IBM Eclipse Foundation, and on and on. So we have a suggestion for you. It's very simple, and we're going to share it with you today. But first, Michael, Tell us what you've discovered now in relationship to Mueller. How did S.S. Herr Mueller get involved with these crypto keys? Very good question. Hey, that was a great summary. And Mueller has been somebody in our research that's been sort of hanging around on the edge. Never could really put a finger on him. I mean, we were very aware of a lot of the suspicions that he um, was a mastermind of 9-11 and the like, but hadn't really focused on him related to these, our experience with the deep state shadow government stealing our technology. But as it's turning out, the investigations that uh, our researchers have been doing over the last three or four months on election fraud have been following various threads and one of those threads was a question related to who actually controls the encryption keys that are used for internet transactions for the state's election boards in each of our states so that was the question that opened this pandora's box and Again, all roads are leading back to the same people. And let me give you an aside, Douglas, because we've sensed a lot of these things as being the source of, of, of the problems we have in this country. But um, very early on, after, after the Supreme Court wouldn't protect our patents, and uh, we started investigating the judicial corruption at the very highest levels, one of the things that kicked in for me was a sixth sense. And that sixth sense came from my previous experience where I was the director of an international gospel group doing contemporary music, and we, um, over time, felt led to in, uh, get involved in, in going into Eastern Europe and then into the Soviet Union and working with, with uh, Christians, with dissidents, with free thinkers, anybody that basically wanted to live an honest life. And we started working with those people, and we observed firsthand, not firsthand, secondhand from these people, how they were being treated by their governments. And we, we observed the evils firsthand. We saw the way the, the uh, 
bureaucrats in these communist countries operated, and we saw the layers within these bureaucracies where you'd have your, your people on the street who were doing their bidding, and then you had their officers, and they, as you moved up the ranks, you got more evil. And where, where the people in the street were sort of working at a job, the, the people above them were the, were the truly evil people in this uh, communist system. And as we started investigating the people that stole our technology, I, I, I would say to people, I said, boy, this feels like what we observed in, this, in the former Soviet Union. And uh, why does this feel that way? And at that time, we didn't know. It was just a sixth sense. Well, roll forward to today. What we are observing, we now have the facts to show that what we are observing is the same people, bankers, politicians, um, royalty, uh, landed gentry in this in, in, in England, we're, we're observing the same people uh, executing on a plan to essentially control everyone on the planet, whereas at the time when they took over the Soviet Union, obviously they were focused on the Soviet Union, then they expanded that to Eastern Europe, and then there was a lot of uh, political move- movements all over the planet to try to instill communism all, all around the world. And now we're seeing the same type of, of, of MO, modus operandi, now with our deep state shadow government and their attempt to take down our president and take down our constitutional republic. So uh, it's, just, it's, it's just mind-boggling to me that I would be sitting in America, a country that's always been respected for its freedom and openness, getting taken down by the same group of people that formerly took down Eastern <clears throat> Europe and the Soviet Union. It's just, it just blows my mind. And it underscores the fact that when we look at the George Soros regime changes that have happened in 14 nations, it's always through social media. It's right. always through the Internet. And so I suggest to people that what we're talking about is no longer just globalism because Look at the way the Chinese have come into this country and Dragonfly, their social credit system, is moving in. It's like a Soviet bloc. We are right. going to be like just another satellite Soviet bloc country, but under China. Because really, when you're talking about globalism, you're talking about totalitarianism. You're talking about what we see out of Silicon Valley, monopolies controlling the largest corporations in America that don't even pay taxes in America. Well, can I interject something there? In that story of what happened in the Soviet Union, one of the things that's very clear from history is that these people who who worked to to take down uh, czarist Russia and install this godless communism uh, also exhibited a... Uh, total disregard for human beings and uh, human rights. And what we saw in the Soviet Union was they mass killed over 40 million of their own people. Over 40 million. Now, how many people in this country go through our history lessons and even know that? That, I mean, the fact that we don't know that as a people um, is is very telling that somebody is keeping that sort of information away from us. And the reason I bring that up is what we are now seeing <coughs> between the these crazy fires in, in uh, California and GMO poisoning and the various sorts of pharmaceutical poisoning that uh, we're experiencing in this country – uh, is indicating that these people really don't care about human beings, and that's where we as uh, enlightened citizens need to realize these people are not like us, and we can't impute our values on them. We've got to realize they're into taking down humanity. That's very clear to me right now with all this evidence that's coming forward. Oh, absolutely. And what you say about history and the pogroms of Russia... 20 million in one sweep. 20 million people killed in one sweep of the hand in Russia. 
40 million, as you say, killed overall. This is the culling of the herd. They they didn't they couldn't feed them, so they killed them. Right. This is eugenics. Yeah, they they they, they, cor- they cordoned off the entire border of the Ukraine and let the people die in in probably the most fertile area of the world in in southern Ukraine. And what's shocking now is those things used to happen isolated, just as you pointed out. Who knows the history? When you hear the real history, most people have to sit back and go, what are you talking about? No one has ever told me that. Then when you show them the proofs, it, it takes them a while to readjust their entire worldview because what is real history is not known. Now, what is going on right now? This is corporate imperialism. And it's turned the New World Order, which was literally a clash of nations over oil when it was George uh, Bush Sr. who declared the New World Order uh, at the United Nations and said that there's no avoiding it. They will take over. Well, they didn't take over. They right almost took over. Right before we attacked Iraq. Exactly. It was about oil. And in the early days, it was all about oil. And uh, Bush, Cheney, uh, Carlisle Group... Uh, uh, Zapata oil, the, you know, I could go on, on and on and on. This is about now the digital world. This is about commanding the digital world. It's not the new world order anymore. It's the new digital world order. And they thought they had it all sewed up with the United Nations till Trump came along and defunded 50% of the United Nations already and is basically going to defund all of it. So what we're talking about is there is a one world order. It's called the Internet and unfortunately, it got weaponized when they stole the ability to make it sca- uh, social networking scalable through stealing leader technologies, patents, um, invention, invention. invention. They stole, they stole secrets. our technology way before it was a patent. And that's what I, I'd like to clear up that confusion because a lot of people hear patents and they think, well, that was way out in 2006 if they look up the record. But the fact is this theft occurred starting in 2000, way be- while we were still early in our engineering days. So the, the trade secrets were stolen and weaponized well before we ever were issued a patent. And they now, were why then, we were issued a patent, I don't know, because they control the patent office, but that's the way it is. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Uh, David Kapos? David J. Kapos. He was there to make sure that what they stole from Leader Technologies uh, didn't get patented. As a matter of fact, I, I, you, uh, the story is so complicated, but... In the no, end, we did, we did get patents, and I have a patent with his na- a signature on it, and that is the patent that we sued Facebook on. But that was way about in 2008. What we didn't know then was they had already stolen that invention well back in the in the trade secrets days when our engineering ink wasn't even dry on our drawings, and so they stole trade secrets. The, the, we proved that they infringe our patent, but they had started that process well before we ever had a patent. I and don't know if that helps to clarify it. Yes, it does. And then also to clarify that uh, Cir- Circo runs the pre-analysis for patents. So when you turn in a patent in America, it goes straight to Britain. And yeah, Br- Circo Brit- started working. Cir- Circo started uh in uh, being the investigator of patents in 2006 at about the same time as we received our our first patent and then we've subsequently gotten two others and so it's the patent on the framework for social networking it's the patent on apps so we got those two we only sued facebook on the framework and even with all of the things fighting against us that we didn't know about at the time, we still proved on 11 of 11 claims that they're infringing our patent. So despite all these these obstacles that uh, the uh, powers that be in Washington within the patent office were using to uh, kill our technology and kill our claims, we still proved it in court. But then one of Obama's new appointees, judges, uh, Leonard P. Stark, um, started circling the wagons, and that continued all the way up to the Supreme Court. Now, Leader Technologies shareholders, who I'm going to have the great privilege of meeting some of them soon, are they came up with an idea, which was the Miller Act, which is basically to say, look, you used our technology, you just didn't pay us, so here's the bill, pay it. And then when they pay it, all kinds of things will probably start to happen. But we have another suggestion, and that's that the crypto keys. You see, the uh, public key infrastructure, these 
uh, we, well, we were told there was a thing called the Federal Bridge Certification Authority that handles these public key infrastructure uh, certifications. And we started looking, and we found a company that is basically a monopoly, just like all the Silicon Valley companies are monopolies, if you think about it. They eat up their competition if there is any competition. So our new suggestion, very, very simple, Mr. President. Go find out about a little teensy tiny committee that controls the tax on the internet, and it's called the um, Federal Common Policy Certification Authority Committee. It's made up of your... IT directors from each of your cabinet members. Nobody seems to know that that little teensy tiny committee gives out a charter. We're not sure exactly whether it's every year, but probably it can be considered every year. And they give yeah, it to they, monopolies. They have to recertify. Yeah, that's right. Year. And so they need to stop giving it to the corrupt people like Hillary Clinton, who through Jerry C. Jones and other cardboard cutout dummies, they started in Canada as a monopoly. In Canada, mind you, we own the internet, we own all the substructure, but somehow the tax on the internet started, what is it called, Nor uh, Nor Norcol, Nortel? Nortel. Nortel. Nortel, which Nortel is, in Canada. Which is basically the Canadian telecommunications system owned the tax on the internet, folks, and then it moved into America, became a company called can Intrust. I, can I correct you there just a little bit, Douglas? Yes. Uh, that's where the mechanism got started, but it wasn't until uh, Nortel sold out. Actually, quote, they went, quote, bankrupt. No, how a Canadian, how a public utility like that can go bankrupt is a, is a magical thing. But anyway, they went bankrupt. They formed a U.S. A subsidiary. Uh, they reformed. They really didn't go bankrupt. But this U.S. subsidiary was the one that got the charter to do the keys. And what they call it at that time, in trust or something else? Uh, it became, in, yeah, one of the, the key charter members was in trust, yes. And so we kind of but focused on But we also had that. Verizon in that mix. We had uh, the state of Illinois in that mix, also uh, a number of federal agencies. And as you will see, if you look at their documents, we actually allowed foreign governments to come in and be certificate authorities in this mix. And then through a process called chaining, they were able to get the keys from each of the other certificate authorities. So if you look now on the Entrust um, certificate, you will see very clearly, publicly available, that uh, one of their server centers is in China. And Entrust was then sold to Orlando Bravo, and then it was sold to Axiom, and, the, and then uh, other companies got involved, and you can't hardly trace who well, owns it now. now. It's now owned by my, um, uh, Chertoff. Which was the, the most amazing name? new development, that, that Chertoff, the head of Homeland Security, which I like to call the SS, because it is in charge of all of the other lower agencies, and he just magically ends up in, uh, getting these contracts for things that are insider trading contracts. And basically, it sounds to me like he had to muscle his way in a turf war yeah. to get these keys. Because I was told from the beginning, and that's the reason that I personally started looking into it, the Federal Bridge Certification Authority is where people like Dick Cheney go to retire. But you'll never find their name there. But they own these keys, and I'm, uh, and, and then they give out these authorities, and I'm going, what does that mean? Well, we, well, have, we haven't found Cheney, but we found every other crooked person that's part of the cabal as part of this. Uh, well, w what, we, what we discovered, and, and this relates to the discussion on the Richard C. Walker patents with Hewitt-Packard and Agilent, and, and then it became the Eclipse Foundation. In that massive patent filing was a whole section of their disclosure related to accounting. It was a whole accounting management system that enabled this network, this Internet of Things, to be able to track and account for any and all transactions occurring from everything that was being tracked, which is every device on the planet, every, every, every human that moves, every vehicle that moves, uh, it's attached to inventory. It's attached. It, I mean, they can literally. They described how they could track everything, and then they had this accounting system related to it. Well, that was always puzzling because normally you would not see 
in a highly technical patent, all of a sudden this accounting system associated with it. But now it's clear what was going on. And what we can now clearly see from the evidence is that the two objectives for the Richard C. Walker patent, one was to tax everything that moved on the planet and to be able to track that tax and then to use that same system for mass surveillance. And in order to use a single system for mass surveillance, what they had to do was give this system an ability to cut through any kind of security and privacy settings on anything, on your computers, on your phones, on your devices, on your smart meters, everything. They had to be able to cut through that right to the unit so they could pick up the uh, information about how that unit was being used so they could tax it. So this magical effort was, we call it tax and surveil. That's what we've come to call it. And so when you think about that from a historical perspective, with any uh, uh, totalitarian system, what are their two objectives? One is to milk and tax their people to to fund the elite of that particular system. And then another thing is to control the people that you're taxing so that you can stay ahead of them and maintain power. And that's what we're seeing here in the Internet world. We're seeing the age-old seven deadly sins now being being foisted upon us through, quote, the Internet of Things. And what's now also clear to me and our people just wrote an article that was posted several days ago. And what I now see is that the gift I brought to them by the end of 1999, 2000 time frame, was we had figured out how to overcome what's called the data silo problem. Are you familiar with that term? Only through you. Okay. The data silo problem for them is... Uh, data silos means every company has their own system, and, and they describe each of those database systems as a silo, and each company has in historically built their own system for keeping their data. And that's fine for that company, but if you want to exchange data across two different systems, there's always an issue with having the two, quote, data silos communicating with each other back and forth. And so over the years, um, companies have developed, most of the time, if you have an alliance with another company, you build a set of connectors between the two data silos, and then you work well between those companies. But you can't then, then take that data and share it with a third or fourth or fifth. And, of course, the government has no ability to get into that silo if we're using a constitutional system. So what these guys did is they took our idea for uh, – social networking that basically is a layer of communication that sits on top of all these systems. And they said, hey, well, this will work well for us because we can have McKibben's system keep all the keys, all the digital keys, for all of these data silos. And then all of a sudden we can tap into all the data silos anywhere on the planet. And if we make sure that we can cut through all the encryption that each one of these systems inevitably has, then we can get access to everything. And that's what they're implementing right now. And it's just a beautiful system. It's such a nice Soviet, totalitarian, communist, dictatorial system where we get to see now the battle on the turf between Hillary with her keys and Mueller trying to use his cyber thug, Joe Sullivan, to get his part of the keys and so they can get that tax and they can surveil and they can also attack right. the and tax, manipulate. The tax is the key to uh, their <clears throat> retirement because with that it's just silently charged and chunks away and it's collected and then distributed to their cronies. That's what's going on here. And then they use then all that data in addition to be able to suppress the people that they're exploiting and make sure they never and use this system including for uh, uh, media control to make sure that the the masses that the the deplorables that they're tracking never figure out their scheme 
oh, this is just good capitalistic corporate imperialism. And, yep. and Hillary is just so probably mad at Mueller, but she had to pay Mueller off for covering her rear for not looking into the Russian collusion with her and Podesta, which is, you know, uh, mind-bogglingly uh, thick. So what we see here is that when Richard C. Walker, one of Hillary's stooges, or a stooge certainly for the IBM Eclipse Foundation, and... Right, from HP and Agilent. Mm-hmm. And then we get to see Jerry C. Jones, another one of her stooges. That He's from a 20-year-long relationship at Rose Law Firm where they... Stole all, uh, lots and lots and lots. So of you're patterns. getting better. You're getting better, uh, Douglas. It's 19 years. <laughs> I like to add that last one. Round You've got 18, and now it's 20. I now know. It's 19. I'm getting up there. I'm getting. Up, I'm going to get close <laughs> soon. 19 years. But you yeah. know, uh, they're going to have their 20 year anniversary real soon here, and it's going to be a special party. I know because R- Jerry C. Jones, who's basically done nothing, he's just a pathetic lawyer, controlled Axion, controlled. Yes. In, in trust, basically, we, we don't even know how much money this is. I don't even know how to calculate that large amount of money. But when we say the Internet of Things, remember, this is Richard C. Walker's Internet of Things, and you are one of those things. You are one of those you, things. You have... You mean every hearer. Every listener to this, and your dog and cat. You will be aggressively remote-controlled. As soon as the chips get put in you, as soon as the wetware gets implanted in you, or when 5G bathes you in an ocean of millimeter waves, that then they can send any frequencies through them they want. They can literally send pictures straight to your brain once you're immersed in a 5G continuum. We are entering into an age when they don't care about you. you, you you're not right. a human. Humans don't matter. In, in China... They determine how many children you can have, and if you have one more See, that, than you're supposed to, they you, you have to take them out, put them in the woods, and let them die. That's the thing that, that the average moral person in this country does not get, and they need to get it be, before it's too late, that these people don't care. We cannot apply our... Most people say, oh, they would never do that. Oh, no, nobody would ever do that, hurt other people like that. Well, we have seen this character. We have seen this animal of a person hijack countries in the past and like i just described killed over 40 million of their citizens in the former soviet union why why do we now think they wouldn't try that with all the things you've just been describing the fact is they are trying it well in china we've got some time before before this is complete but once this digital network gets put in place. I mean, right now, there is a kill switch on the Internet, and it's not controlled by the U.S. Precisely. I forget that guy's name. What's his name? Um, uh, you mean Stephen Crocker? No, the IK yeah, guy? Yeah, Stephen Crocker. He's still in charge of it, even though Obama gave the control of Internet websites to an international body. That is the kill switch. They could kill the entire e-commerce infrastructure of this country by turning it off. Well, That's how close we are, and we cannot allow that. You can't allow a single body to have control of something so critical to our economic and social infrastructure. Absolutely. This is a national security issue. And to go back to what you were just saying, in China, the Uyghur people, they took a million of them to experiment on. They killed 750,000 of them in their experiment. And then they say that what it, the, they were doing was it was a vocational training program. They call them re-education centers, but they now are calling it vocational training. And so in your vocational training in China, three-fourths of you may die. That was the first experiment. One million people, three-fourths of them died. The United Don't believe me. The United Nations is bringing charges against them as we speak, as well as any other uh, country that has any morality. And that was just one tiny experiment in their social credit system, what they call the dragonfly. They are killing we have, people. We have, we as have we verified speak. with source documents everything you just said. Yes, and we, yeah, absolutely. If you follow Tooth News headlines, most everything I preach, I only preach it if it's already been out there and verified. So, what we're talking about here is an Internet of Things where you become the thing. And to control that, whoever controls that, 
controls the digital global world. And they're only concerned about the digital global world, by the way, because that's where the money is moving right now. That's where they can play their games. And don't get me started on that. So what we're talking about here is a turf war. You got to see Michael Chertoff came in and got his huge piece of the pie. It looks like he somehow stole it from Jerry C. Jones or somebody. And then well, you I, think s- they, I, I think they cut him in on the action. I think this is typical mob turf war. And Michael knew too much, so they had to cut him in on the action. So he magically goes out from running Homeland Security and gets his contract to uh, to uh, manage keys with uh, actually purchased in trust. But they had already shifted most of their business to a company called DigiCert. So that's that's Hillary's core company right now. And if you look at uh, the federal common policy disclosure, both DigiCert and Entrust are are top tier. Uh, certificate authorities. So they're running the game. And so they only have a few people really in the game with them. And there, But there are a number of companies who become, um, I'm not sure whether you call them subsidiaries, but they, in America at first, they worked under Intrust. And then so there were the people who were granted this charter from the federal government. Instead of the federal government handling their own crypto keys, no, they give it to companies that are international, multinational. Private companies. Private globalist companies, okay? Right. And and what happens here? We just have to stop that. That's all there is to it. It's just like, don't give your ICANN number assignment and, and uh, keeping control of ICANN to other countries when we're the ones who built the substructure. And we, if we don't really like what China's doing, cut them off until we have 5G being blasted from space. And I just saw the very sad report yesterday that... Elon Musk has been given now permission to do the rest of his 11,000 5G satellites that he's launching into space. 11,000 of them. Thank you very much, Senior Executive Service. And the the Aerospace Company, which is a private company that's essentially running the Department of Defense right now. Precisely. Peopled with SES, S, former SES and current SES members. And those Senior Executive Service members make sure that the money only goes in the current streams of the flow of cash, which means to, to Lockheed, to BAE, to Boeing. And when you look closely, you're going to find the queen owns the golden shares in Lockheed. You're going to find the queen owns the golden shares in BAE. You're going to find the queen owns many of these golden shares. And so in the old world, the queen showed Hillary how to own the mines like Rio Tinto and the uh, resources and substances and then how to fight for the oil, and there's always a big fight for the oil, but then she showed how to get into the financial systems and the service systems, and that's the reason Serco has more contracts in America than anybody, and we can't even keep track of how many contracts, and why is it that we give all of our contracts or a, a great... I think at last count, our last count was something like 1,400 different Serco contracts with the federal government. Big contracts, each and every one of them. And so why is it we allow the Brits to manage our sensitive data management, our financial management? Why did we choose a Canadian slash British company to do Obamacare? And why did we get gouged into setting up a website with that British company to set up Obamacare? And then the servicing of Obamacare is all through Serco. Why? 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 Because it's the same old system that was used in Britain and has been used for a long time. It's called corporate imperialism and has come to America through the SES. And then the SES gives the contracts out. And the people who are actually the bosses of these agencies that may be presidential appointees don't even know what's going on because they're not told. I have a question for you, Douglas, on the SES. With all the facts and evidence proving what we're saying... Uh, why isn't there more discussion in the public about the corruption that's being pushed through the SES? Well, when Betsy put out the SES Awareness Month, and with yourself as a spokesperson and all your researchers and our researchers in the Conclave and her team, and we pointed out exactly the who SES... The evidence is overwhelming. There's no way that if you're an honest person, you can say that this isn't the core of what's called the deep state. You can look it up in friggin' Wikipedia, for God's sake. 
Hallelujah. And I want everyone to do that, please. I, I don't mean that sarcastically. I mean, do the slightest bit of research. And if you can't see that the SES is the deep state, or the shadow government, as we call it, then read a little further. Do the slightest bit of homework, folks. Listen to one of our broadcasts. Look at one of our intelligence reports, and you will see that this 10,000 group of people is basically just like well, they followed upon the exact model of the Jesuits and the 10,000 Jesuits, who actually in America there's 10,000 Jesuits as we speak. And it's an old, old system. It goes back as an in oldest institution in the world to the Vatican, 2,000-year-old system. And this system is simply to keep everything going in the bureaucratic status quo. Make sure nothing changes. Make sure nobody else gets the money except the people who are approved and make sure nobody knows who those people are, and make sure that they're removed in dummy companies and asset management companies, so uh, removed that you can't even tell who they are. And that's, that's what we see. So what we're seeing with these crypto keys, same thing. When it became evident that this was a huge source of income, control, taxing, surveillance, targeting, manipulation, and it's the number one way to actually con use the internet as a weapon, is through these keys. It's used, as yep. you pointed out, in the elections to steal our elections from us. I'm sure it's used, for instance, high-speed, uh, high-frequency traders on the stock market. They still use the internet. They still have to have crypto keys. So the fact that they control the stock market, uh, so what? The crypto keys are controlled by Hillary and her gang, Mueller, Sullivan, uh, uh, Chertoff, Jones, and the rest of the group, which we... Can't, don't, can't even name because some of these small little companies that own the rights to hand out these uh, private and public uh, infrastructure crypto keys, we don't even know who they are. But I would assume that they are the same people who are ripping off America in all the rest of the normal ways. So you can guarantee that Rod Rosenstein, Andrew McCabe, that Hillary, that Jonathan Weiner, that Victoria Newland, that, uh, you know, John Kerry, it's the same old gang. John Podesta, uh, Tony Podesta, they have their piece of this pie. I will put a nickel on that, and I'm not a betting man, but I'm going to bet that nickel because I was told from the beginning that if you look to where the richest, most corrupt people go to retire, it's the Federal Bridge Certification Authority. And now we know it's not federal. It's not a bridge. Nothing certified. And they are not an authority. But what they are is they hold the crypto keys and they use them to their advantage. And it's a turf war out there. And when Mueller did this great favor for Hillary to not investigate her, even when Trump has put out, what, how many dozens of basically demands and when he puts out a public demand then robert Mueller is actually obliged as his employee to investigate who he says to investigate same thing with rod rosenstein same thing with with jeff sessions that's the reason sessions had to go and there never was a plan with sessions and the doj has been 100 percent compromised as well as the fbi and the cia and especially their counterintelligence divisions so what we're seeing well, the here DOJ, the doj is is funding the ses exactly the the DOJ 500 actually make all the uh, salary decisions for the 10,000 member SES. And I bet you, something tells me, a little bird in my ear says, I bet you not only that they have offshore accounts, each and every one of those 500 members of the uh, Department of Justice, and they make more than any civil servant, even after a civil servant works for 30 years, every one of those SES members makes more than a full termed fully experienced civil servant the moment they start. Plus, they get these amazing awards, as we've talked about. So this isn't SES Awareness Month or Circle Awareness Month or Crown Agents Awareness Month or um, Chemtrailing Awareness Month. This is almost like we are waking up to these crypto keys, finding out that they are at the heart of all of this. They're at the heart, really, of stealing leader technology's insight. Now, you told me earlier in a conversation that there was one time that you had a conversation with somebody about the internet tax. Yes. Yeah, this, this uh, memory just uh, came out of nowhere. In fact, I think I woke up thinking about it. But um, once it became clear to us that this taxing system was somehow central core to 
what Chandler and uh, the Patent Office did to us, I started remembering a conversation I had uh, while I was in Illinois, in Chicago, talking with a the, the man who put the uh, fiber optic networks throughout Chicago, and he specifically was asking me what I thought about how to tax the Internet. And, of course, at the time, I thought, well, that's, I could see how our system could do it. So I described how it could happen. I didn't just get into the tech, technical details, but in general, how it could happen. That is the only conversation I've ever had with anyone that I can recall regarding taxing the Internet because it wasn't something we were focused on. But he said, the, as a policy group, Chicago and Illinois were trying to figure out how to tax the Internet. Well, that uh, has come rushing back now into my memory, and now I realize that that was exactly the same time when they were shifting. According to the latest documents on the PKI federal website, they described the end of 1999 as the time when they shifted how they were going to do the PKI keys, and then by 2004, they had it fully implemented. Well, that's magical because two, February 2004 is when IBM sponsored EclipseCon 2004 and when Facebook uh, went live. So it's obvious they, they were waiting for us to get done so that they could implement this new way of handling the crypto keys because our platform, our social platform, gave them a single point of entry for the entire web, which they did not have prior to that because every company had their own data silo. And we had solved that problem, but in order to do that, they had to ignore our designs rel relative to security and privacy, where we actually had embedded uh, cryptography within the databases so you could protect your own data even though you were using a community environment. But they took all that out because then they wouldn't be able to uh, tap into all that data. So that was why they had to steal our technology because they knew that we were going to have a secure system and they didn't want to compete with it. And so they had to kill us. Is that what it's you call the obvious private and public key? The distinction that you make between the private keys that you have? Right crypto keys right. and the public crypto keys and so your private crypto keys would have kept people private well we it would have been more than one private key in other words you could you could uh, encrypt anything you wanted within your workspace not just one but any any number of them so you had control of your data you can encrypt it any way you wanted but if that had been implemented these guys could not have one key to uh tap into a person's individual accounts because they would also be encrypted. So the, their idea of a global uh, network where they could tap into anywhere on the planet while sitting at their pajamas eating Cheerios would not work. That's what they wanted. And so they had to make sure that we died and we're not a com competition to this way of doing it, to their way of doing it. Well, you know, I take that remark personally, sitting in my pajamas eating Cheerios, <laughs> as you as you full well know, having been to the studios, uh, getting me out of my pajamas is tough. Yes, so, I, that, that vision's horribly uh, running through my mind right I, now. I know the things you've seen, but, you know, we're in a war. This isn't, you know, what it is, is as you said, it's the Chicago mob. And remember that Hillary Clinton was a patent infringement lawyer. That means she was a person who stole patents, patent infringement. That's what it's all about now. You put in a patent now, some big company is going to say, you've infringed on our patent and we're going to take your patent. Not only that, we're going to go after you personally if you even flinch. And they literally kill people over patents. And industrial espionage is one of the most powerful things and certainly one of the most lucrative things. Right now we know that the theft of leader technologies, uh, many, many different things that they stole, basically the value of that now is over $14 trillion. So we're talking about an industry where the money they knew from the beginning 
that this was where the mob needed to get in. This was better than betting on football in Las Vegas. This was where the money was going to flow. And so they got in early. Now, I want to ask you a question. Not only can President uh, Trump simply sign the Miller Act, send, uh, send you a check, Leader Technologies and your shareholders, but he could tell that little group, the Federal Common Policy Certification Authority Committee, to simply give the charter to Leader Technologies. Could you, Michael McKibben, and your group handle that? Could you switch over all of the crypto keys and you handle what has become basically a turf war of people who are ripping off everyone with attacks on the internet? Could your company, Leader Technologies, do that? Uh, wow. It is engineering, so i got to believe it's possible. Uh, but uh, I need to know a lot more to know the best way to attack it. Because I think some of the things that they've done are so corrupt they have to be recast. And others probably can be used. So I think it's a little early to decide how best to do it. But in theory, yeah, in theory, yes. But uh, I don't know how big this breadbasket is yet. I see. Now, is your – you had the ability to do this encryption to begin with. They stole that. So, in fact, this is another patent infringement upon you, or at least uh, trade secret infringement. Well, no, not IP. encryption has been around forever. So the, the idea of doing encryption is not ours, no. No, but, but I mean uh, using the random our, using encryption in, within our social media network or design. That part was patented. Yes. Plus, you used random number generators, which aren't rigged. So well, that's, that would be the, the the way to do it. Okay. So, but uh, even if it is rigged, if if you start encrypting various things within your particular data silo or workspace, and you do that over and over and over again. The, the law of, of uh, uh, I forget what, what mathematical law that is, but basically the more complications you introduce into their ability to tap through it all, eventually they're not going to be able to do much of anything because mm -hmm. it's going to be too complex. Okay, so here's the idea. The encryption keys that are being used now, mu they must have to turn in something to the uh, committee that gives them the charter. So whatever they turn in and whatever the patents are and whatever their IP is concerning them, we need to subsume. We need to take it because we were never really told that we were being taxed. We were never really told the truth about this ripoff. And we were never certainly told the truth about the surveillance. So my point is, I believe there's two ways that Trump can actually move the entire Silicon Valley, um, basically a, a coup d'etat. He needs to do a coup d'etat on the Silicon Valley, and he needs to have experts like yourself and your company come in and take over, clean up, go back, and as you say, use some and get rid of some, and basically restructure it so that it goes back to the way that it was originally designed with Leader Technologies, which was free and secure. And I believe that he can simply do that by rechartering the crypto keys the certificate, the public key, uh, key infrastructure? In principle, that's what has to happen. What, what it, it appears right now is that those chief information officers in the various agencies appear to be all SES insiders, the, the stay-behind network. And so as a group, they probably are clueless what is actually going on at the engineering level. That would be my guess. And so what's got to happen is we've, we've got to look into this uh, Pandora's box and figure out what's going on and how they're doing it. And we, we can clearly see who they're doing it with because they describe it. The other thing about their documents is they're all very cleverly cast so that if they ever get, if they ever get the light of accountability shined on them, they can say, well, see, we disclosed it here, or see, we disclosed it here. But it's very cleverly worded, so you would have to really uh, think like a bad guy to really figure out how they just covered their rear end, uh, if that makes sense. It's, it's all very convoluted wording, but it, 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 they've gotten really good at being slick about it. 
over the years, and it's all lawyer. It's just all lawyer talk. Well, it's Chandler. I'm going to write a law that says that I don't have to obey the law. I'm going to right. write a law that says everyone has to tell the truth except me. I get to well, lie. Well, that sounds like a joke. It's not a joke. It's called the it's called the False Statements Accountability Act of 1996, passed on October 11th of 1996. Exactly. It's and slipped in. No, one unanimous. Thing, one thing I know for sure: if there's a flow of money. Legal, illegal, it doesn't matter. The Clintons are going to put a toll booth in, and they're going to get a tax. And then they're going to take 98% of it for their little family, little nuclear family of three, Bill, Hillary, and Chelsea. And the rest of the people get the 2%. And this is a fact. Just look into it, folks. So when we found out that Hillary, through her friend, uh, Jerry C. Jones, and other machinations probably has a tax on this, then we knew that it was very, very, very real. So this yeah. is another Clinton corruption. It's the corruptocrats in D.C. doing their standard operating procedure. Wherever there's a flow of money, the big dogs get to go, and they get to collect the tax. And then they have their cyber thugs and their uh, supposed law enforcement thugs who are really uh, law unenforcement thugs, which would be Mueller, Comey, McCabe, the whole gang. It's the same old people. And so what we need to do is stop that group of we now I've now moved it up to 48 people. I used to say three dozen. I'm now I've, I'm far, sorry I have to add another 12. And that doesn't count the Privy Council. Okay, I'm only talking about Americans who need to be put in jail for treason and sedition. And there's about 48 of them. And they their crimes are so thick that you could take any one of their many, 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 if not tens of thousands of crimes, and just prosecute one and they'd go to jail for the rest of their old lives. Yeah, if you actually, if you actually count the number of ethical violations that any of these people that we have um, been able to investigate... Uh, you, you're gonna you're you're talking about the worst ethical crimes you could possibly commit and get away with. So if you actually paid attention to the Constitution here, you're right. All these people would be in jail, or well, maybe worse. I, I I'm so sad that they're not, and I do believe we're headed towards the time when certainly the light of day is disinfecting a lot of their grotesque evil as they lie in the swampy shores. There in Washington, D.C., but what we are going to see now, I hope, is a big cleanup, and that cleanup can start with the very core. If we get these crypto keys under control, then we actually have control of the Internet. Bring ICANN back to this country, give it to honest people like Leader Technologies, and let them clean it up because the surveillance backdoors, the uh, mechanical engines riding on microchips, all of that garbage, it all has to be removed. And then we have to realize who our enemies are, and that would be China. And anything to do with China, we can't allow them to have anything to do with anything American that's digital. Because notice where Hillary's going, Shanghai. That's where interest well, went. Well, look, look, look what happened in December of 2004 when IBM took its most profitable division, the PC group, and sold it to Lenovo in China. There you know something's going on. Precisely. And th that was that was an early establishment of this uh, embedded um, spy architecture that you're talking about. But if I could return to Joe for a minute, Joe Sullivan, I, and give an example because he's probably the most classical uh, soy boy cutout that I have seen in in all the ones that our team has been investigating, because he's so clearly a plant. I mean, he he. Um, his mother was a CIA agent, and above, she actually went to study in Leningrad for two years and then became a, a CIA agent for two years, three years. And then he went to the University of Miami Law School and then immediately was hired into uh, three different Department of Justice offices, Miami, San Francisco, and Nevada, and where he did a, a total of 31 uh, litigations, which is not very many litigations for a, a U.S. attorney or an assistant U.S. attorney, which he was. And then he immediately went, in the phase two of his career, he immediately went and became uh, a chief officer at eBay, Skype, PayPal. I'm just going to read you down the list in, in sequential order. 
after he was at eBay, he bought a $5 million, two $5 million properties in Palo Alto. Hmm. How do you get that much money on a, a assistant U.S. attorney's salary? Then he went to Facebook for seven years. Then Risk IQ, then U.S. Cyber Alliance, and then Blue Kava with Mark Cuban, and then Airbnb, and then GuruSul, and then Uber, and then he was appointed to Obama's uh, Cyber Security Council in 2016. And at at Uber, he lost 57 million customer and driver records, and then was fired from there, and it was hired by Cloudflare earlier Cloudflare earlier this year in May of 2018. And magically, Cloudflare has the digital key contracts in a number of states, but most notably Florida. I should say that the Cloudflare has the digital key contract for the boards of elections in Ohio and Florida and other states. So uh, the guy never earned a dime in his life. He's done nothing but be a corrupt lawyer that's totally obvious from his resume. And he knows little about anything digital. And he simply goes to meetings. Well, where do you have time? I mean, he was mm-hmm. so busy chasing, um, I'm sure, d- doing the work of, of, of his seniors while he was at the DOJ. But then magically, after a decade, he, he, he just goes right at the top of all these major companies in Silicon Valley, one right after another. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah. It's the standard. And then he testifies before Congress the very day that the verdict came in on our case. He he was Facebook's chief security officer, testified in Congress that day and repeated the lie that Zuckerberg started Facebook at his dorm room in Harvard. At almost the moment that we proved on 1111 claims that Facebook is infringing our patent. I mean, the timing is uncanny. It's just so beautiful. He's It's the standard pattern you've often shown where these people are put in jobs they don't deserve, they don't do anything, they don't even have time to go to the meetings that they'd have to go to, they're not qualified, and yet one job after the next, because why they know the one secret, and the one secret is that none of those companies are real, that it's all just a facade. Michael, I want Trump to understand he has a new option, not just the Miller Act, but to give Leader Technologies the chance to show that there can be honest crypto keys that do not tax and do not surveil all Americans and basically the whole world that's on the Internet, and that we turn it back into what we had hoped it could be, a free...